to for this i don't actually need a mic for 20 people is it okay now so that was uh, c2m app architecture uh, so that we covered so uh, in that we received a lot of uh, doubts like you know how would hubs um mvc how mvc is different from mvvm and vice versa this is what we'll be covering here just some basic guidelines before we get started is uh, you know please keep your cell phones in silent mode or switch it off uh and uh, in the feedback form that you have in your desks that in your seats in the chairs is uh, there is a wifi uh, ssid in password is written so you can use that but yeah please uh, use it uh, use it with caution you know, we expect like a gentleman conduct from everybody and respect your fellow members uh, there is a general guideline and if you have any suggestion to improve the series or any suggestion you know it's welcome is let me or other speakers know or other uh, pune mobile developer organizers know and it's an open session so what we usually do is uh, the session is going on and if you have any doubts you can stop me right there and you can ask unless the speakers prefer it some other way they'll, they'll unless it's mentioned you can you can ask your doubts any time and uh, about pune mobile developers uh, we started in august 2013 as, and uh, we are also a part of google developer communities uh, uh, it was earlier it was known as together with google program so now it's been renamed and uh, it's entirely rebranded as google developer community so we are we are a part of that and since Jan january 2017 and uh, the initial focus was to you know increase awareness in the mobile technology only so uh, that was the initial uh, focus and we are still focused on that we are, we are totally into mobile technology not limited but yeah like most into mobile tech and we have almost 4900 members as of now and we are also one of the uh, you know top uh, active while meetup groups in pune not while meetup groups in general in pune and we have taken 38 meetups so far this will be 38 or 39 meetups there was pune mobile developer now we have some collaborative projects going on it's not yet started so if you want to contribute please let me know um so you one other thing if you go to meetup page if you go to the meetup page and meetup the previous meetup see to um while the architecture is there uh, we actually we shared a link and we keep updating the this doc second you can we have the recordings of previous meetup so if you want to you can watch the recording if you missed it yeah uh this is the um, structure of the ctm series we have and this is actually the important links also so we have the important links so if you, we have a slack group if you want to join you can use this link to join and you can find this here uh, in the ctm app architecture uh, meetup event page we'll also add it this in the current meetup page also uh, this is our twitter handle if you want to follow it for updates and if you have any queries this is the doc this is the stru structure we have So we have done the idea phase, which is prototyping. We have done the basics. We have done architecture, and now uh, we are doing the design part. So here we'll we'll do some UI designing, native UI designing, plus we'll implement this architecture. And next, if you want to see what's coming next, right? So we have development. It won't be part one and two. It will probably merge these two into development, and then we'll have a testing. Uh, so this will actually help you somebody who's interested in ddd right ddd and testing yeah so testing also this this meetup will be dedicated for testing so what we're doing is uh, this entire series what we're doing is we are focusing on creating a single app basically two apps one in android one in uh, on ios so it will be two similar apps and uh, we'll try to keep the ui as similar as possible so by the end of this series we'll have two apps a uh, one in android one in ios both doing the same thing so we can learn like you know we know how to create a recycler view and a list in android so how to do the same thing in ios using table view so we'll learn that that is the whole agenda 
and of course if you're not interested in ios or android you can actually you know you can use the time mentioned in the this page so for ctm series specifically what we're doing is we're mentioning here the time with the agenda is the time so if you're not interested in android you can directly come at 12:45 for this If you're inter not interested in iOS, you can leave by 12:30. We'll have a break in between, some 10-15 minutes break in between Android and iOS session. But yeah, Android and iOS both will happen side by side in this session. And after this, after we are done testing, we'll cover best practices and we'll update some of the uh, some of the features of the app. We'll try to include. This is actually the idea right now. It may change of the best practices for Android and for iOS. And then we'll cover monetization. How do you monetize your app using? Um, using ads using facebook or we'll we'll choose one of the sdks either facebook or admob or uh, ad colony how to implement that and how this whole uh, you know sdk things works how you how it works and how you can actually earn money from your apps if you release it for free this is this will this will cover that part will not cover again this is like uh, right now this is this this may change later but yeah right now we don't have any plan to include uh, you know the integrating google google play payments and all those things are not here and finally how to release it uh, how to release the app so you are done with the development how to create the re release ready uh, apk for android and ipa for ios we'll cover that part and how do you uh, how do you actually release it in the market and in the 11th the last part is actually open If you have any suggestion, please let me know. What can we do? We can do a hackathon, or if you have any other suggestion, we can do that. Or we can have a like a session where everyone can talk about their apps and the challenges they face. If you have any suggestion, do let me know. Um, you can join the Slack group. This is our Slack group. You can join it. We have a dedicated uh, channel for the feedback. Meter feedback we have this year. This was an uh, this was a collaborative project. This was already covered in the basics part, so. as you mentioned that right, somebody was interested in hybrid or, or why not cross platform why 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 are we learning this so this is so that we can build the basics first and then we can go for react native or xamarin or hybrid apps or using like cordo or something and architectural components and other things so in the series as i mentioned like uh, this is the series in which we will we'll develop two app we'll learn about it and then we'll implement it the idea is to do side by side live coding uh, if you want you can bring your own laptop you can follow along uh, but yeah doing actually a, doing a hands on session takes quite a lot of time and uh, we are not exactly doing a hands on session but yeah you can follow along if you have any doubts we can as a community we can solve your doubts with us Here the contents uh, for today. Uh, basics. We'll revisit the basics that we covered in the previous, and then some some more basics of MVP, and then we'll build the UI. We'll implement the model of MVP, then the view of MVP, then the view of MVP, which is the presenter, and then we'll test the view. This is not actually the unit testing or integration testing. This is actually we'll execute it. We'll check whether it's skeleton or whether it's working or not. Uh, so that is the basic thing, and then we, then we'll do the same thing on iOS. So in the previous meetup, we covered this part. So this was actually just the basics, uh, object oriented OOPs basics. This is something that is needed everywhere. So consider this: there is an interface, there is another interface that extends this interface, there is an abstract class that implements this interface, there is a concrete class that extends this uh, abstract class, there is another concrete class that extends this class. So this is the supermost class, and this is the bottom most class 
so in this hierarchy considering this hierarchy the green ones are the op allowed operations and the red ones are the operations that are not allowed so x we can write x is equal to x can hold an object of a x can hold an object of b c and d a can hold b c and d b can hold c and d c can hold d and the vice versa is not allowed d cannot hold c d is equal to new c this is not allowed because a child cannot hold the friends or a object of super Now the same thing here. That was the takeaway from this. This is what we call. This is also something we did. Like uh, there was a question, like uh, you know, why why not? Why 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 do we go for architecture components? Uh, architecture basic, and uh, why not write everything in one place and write separate functions and you know everything is modularized there. Why do we need separate classes? So actually, this will actually make your code spaghetti. So this was a slide from previous meeting. So when you put everything in one class, what happens is it will make your code spaghetti. So by spaghetti, what we mean is you know you will not be able to stand the flow of the program from where it's going, where from which thread to which thread to from one class to some other class to some other delegated class. So if we do everything in one class, so this is these are some of the issues we face, and it makes your code tightly coupled. So this thing actually we have learned from the very beginning, right? Your code should not be tightly coupled. Should be loosely coupled and highly cohesive. So, what what does it actually mean by loosely coupled? We'll see that, and it will also make your code hard to read, maintain, and unit test. If you know, generally this actually I I I heard this in at least three or four of the sessions that I watched online. Um, they say that uh, if you're not able to write test cases for your app, that means something is wrong with your algorithm. Because writing unit test cases and integration test cases is not that hard. It's hard because The architecture that is used is actually quite bad, or it's there is some room for improvement. It, it also makes it error-prone and difficult to debug. So this is one of the problems. To solve one of those, I mean, there are several other problems. To solve these, there was solid principles. And uh, this I'm not going to cover everything in detail because this was the slide from last meetup, previous meetup, uh, in which we explained all this with an example. Now, uh, yeah, for just for like one-liners, in solid, uh, this is like. S in solid it stands for single responsibility principle. Uh, it is quite difficult to follow this, but following this actually makes your code uh, more maintainable. So what a single respons responsibility principle says is um, your class should have only one responsibility, or in other words, it, sh it should need only one reason to change. It should not be handling multiple responsibilities. If there are multiple responsibilities, <coughs> you can create multiple classes and then you can actually use composition to delegate those responsibilities. <laughs> the next one is open close principle what this says is your code should be open for extension and closed for modification so uh, in this exactly what it does is you know like uh, uh, if i have written a class and there is a function i have properly tested it it's working exactly the way i want it to work so i don't want this class to change so uh, this method to change so what i'll do i'll i'll make this method the final method and but this class is still open you can extend the class and you can add more functionality you can actually you know use decorator pattern or whatever is uh, required for your solution so that is that is what means by you know your core functionality should be closed and uh, but your again your class should be open for you know extending the functionality that's what this means uh then let's go I'll cover later then there is an interface aggregation principle uh, how many of you are android developers so the example uh, one very good example is what this principle says is interface segregation principle is um, clients should not be forced to override the methods that are of no use to them so you are a lot of your android developers right so um if you want to um add a click listener on a button what do we do button dot set on click listener then we pass a reference of view dot set on click listener and uh, this listener interface it has one one method that's on click right there is on click you override the on click method and whatever you want to happen on the button click you write in that method right what if you want to implement on long click then you need to write you dot set on long click listener then again so there are two separate interfaces you dot on click listener then view dot on long click listener so it would have been much better if there was one interface click listener and two methods right on click and on long click the problem with this is if i just want to implement on click i still have to override on long click because it's an interface and whoever implements that interface will will need to override all the methods if i need to implement just on long click i will need to implement on click also 
right so this is this, this is what this principle said so i should not be forced to override the methods that i don't want that are of no use to me this is interface aggregation principle so what google did is they separated these two interfaces on click and on long click so if you want to use one you can use one if you want to use both you can implement both the interfaces so this is what this thing and uh, yeah list of substitution principle what it says is here uh, in this hierarchy as as you already know by now that you know every uh, super class every class can hold a reference to its child classes right so if i write a is equal to b a is equal to new b or b is equal to new c i can write i can write b is equal to d also right because b is the super class of c and d so b can hold c or b can hold d or if there is another another class called c2 which also extends from b i can write b is equal to c and then b is equal to c2 so these are the sibling classes that can be interchanged this is exactly what this principle says let's go substitution principle what it says it um every classes should be substitutable by their siblings so you should not depend on the exact class if, uh, or if you're depending on it it should be substitutable by its sibling by its sibling by by mean you know the the child of the same parent that being on the sibling class this is what this principle says and in b what it says is dependency inversion principle uh, what this says is um, classes should depend on abstraction not on uh, concrete implementation so how it helps so if i have a class and which is depending on another concrete class another object of the class so now it is tightly coupled with the class i cannot change the class if i want to change to make some change here i need to go to in that class then again go to the dependent class and make some changes there then i have to check the functionality here so what this principle says is depend on abstraction depend on the interface depend on the super class not the child concrete classes what this thing one by abstraction it says abstract classes or interface this was the solid principle so this is uh, uh, this is again this is something i am repeating from the uh this principles are not something that um, you know you should be referring to this principles are something that should actually be a part of your thinking process so whenever you say whenever you are thinking of a uh, building a solution or building any app or any like uh, any software for that matter this should be a part of your thinking process this is what makes our code a lot modular unit testable and uh, you know and, and a lot more robust this is what we covered till um this meetup uh, this is also we covered this is like just a recap of mvp this you must have seen like i don't know 50 times everywhere we see mvp mvp or whatever there are three blocks all connecting talking to each other right so again this is the same thing there is a model Uh, what is model model is responsible for uh, the data in your app by data i mean when since you're talking about android application so by data i mean shared preferences um local file system sqlite database any network call uh yeah things like that model is responsible for that presenter what it does is this is responsible for presentation logic so whatever uh the data is there whatever changes that we need to make to make the data presentable presenter does that and then presenter updates the ui here uh, the U the usp of this pattern is the view is actually totally uh, you know a dumb block in this ui it is entirely dumb view doesn't know when to do what view just knows what presenter tells it to do this and view does that presenter tells the view to show loading presenter shows loading presenter tells the view to okay loading stop loading because i have the data this is the data show the data view shows the data so this is the usp of this part since a uh, view view actually is it becomes so dumb so that's why it becomes very easy to unit test the view when we talk about presenter uh, in the previous meetup there was one person who asked like you know we can test the model we can test the view view why this presenter block is here why not put everything here in the same block right so again view will become too complex and it will it will have all the uh, business logic plus presentation logic view the responsibility of view will become too much and it will become difficult to mock and test so that's why there is a this block is inserted here in a presenter 
So Vue has only two responsibilities. One is follow presenter's uh, directions, presenter's instructions, and if there is any user action. So uh, specifically in Android, uh, in Android app case, there is a button click or there is a drag event or whatever you want to know. If there is any uh, user action, then pass it along to the presenter if required. If you view can handle it, then it's fine. If not, pass it on to presenter. And then presenter will decide and it will, okay. So for example, uh, like WhatsApp or Skype. So here there is a button called, you know, show me online or show me away or show me offline. Right. So if user says, okay, show me offline or sh don't show me online, this is the part view is handling. Then when view says, okay, user has said, show me as offline. So now view delegates this user action to presenter. Presenter, okay, it tells, okay, then the view wants to be shown as, this button to be shown as offline. So view then tells the model. The model will, up will update whatever is there, I mean, whichever is remote is there, local is, whatever uh, it's communicating to, it will update that. And uh, yeah, so view does not communicate with model directly. Uh, there was someone who worked only on MVC, right? View was with them, right? So the problem with MVC is there is model, there is view, and there is controller. And they all actually know about each other. View communicates with model. Model communicates with controller. Controller communicates with both of them. So here the problem is everybody knows too much about each other, right? And what happens if you know too much? This is actually, you know, in software terms, knowing too much about other class means tight coupling. Knowing very less about the other class means loose, loose coupling, right? So, uh, like, uh, exactly if you talk about, like, in, in interfaces, uh, interface, what it says is, you know, interface is like a contract. The same thing is in Swift. It's called protocol. Talk, it's actually saying it protocol makes it makes a uh, much, much better sense. That, you know, uh, it's a protocol that has to be... So one example that I gave in the previous meetup, I'm not sure if it's an apt example or not, but yeah, it's uh, the example was, you know, um, there is a contract between me and the and the newspaper company. There is a contract. What is the contract? You deliver me newspaper every day at my doorstep, every day, and uh, other way is uh, at the end of every month I'll pay whatever is the bill. This is the contract. This is the contract. Now. I should not care about, you know, if the newspaper delivery guy is coming in a bicycle or a chopper to deliver the newspaper. I should not care about that. And he does not, he should not care, you know, where the money is coming from. Whether it's white money or black money, it should, he should not care about that, right? So that is, that is the contract. So now, you know, if I get to know, like, you know, okay, the newspaper guy is coming in a chopper to deliver a newspaper, I'll ask for a ride. So this is like, this is tight coupling. This should not happen. So, uh, if this contract is followed, so I don't care where the newspaper is coming from, and they don't care where the money is coming from, as long as they're getting paid every month, and as long as I'm getting the newspaper every month. So, the same thing is happens here. So, this is like, you know, <coughs> here, view actually owns an update presenter. Presenter has a reference to model, and model does not have reference to anything. Model does not have reference to anything. Presenter tells the model, give me this data. Presenter tells the model, okay, update this data. So then, model actually it's a responsibility of the model. And where does the this was another uh, this was another question in the previous meetup. Where does the business logic reside? Reside inside the model, be, beside the model. So now presenter, presenter should not care where the data is coming from. Same as the newspaper delivery guy. Presenter should not care where, whether the data is coming from the local SQL database or the remote database or the local file system. All presenter cares about is presenter got the data, presenter converted the data into the presentable format, and then presenter passed it on to view. This is the MVP pattern. If you have any questions, you can ask, right? It will be inside model. So in that case, the change should propagate for the model change. It will tell the presenter, presenter will update the UI. This is the propagation of change. Now, content provider will be inside the model. So it's like, you know, if you, in the model, there should be method, get data. And inside get data, what model will do is, it will create, using content resolver, it will create content provider. And from content provider, it will, you know, get the data and update. 
it will get it will give the data to presenter content provider will live behind this actually this will be much better here it will be beyond the model because content provider is basically it's an abstraction over the data right so it will be beyond the model it will not come till present so yeah this was the basic now here uh, if you remember the and dependency inversion principle what it says is uh, uh, what it says is um, classes should depend on abstractions not on implementation so here to implement the mvp you know we have been talking about this from the past two three months how do we implement this to implement this so for the view view has an interface actually i view this is the interface call it i view or view interface or whatever and view implements the interface there is the interface for presenter presenter implements that interface and similar thing for model there is a interface for model and model inter implements that interface now presenter has a reference to the view not the view the view interface because it's not depending on the view directly it's depending on the abstraction the i view and view has a reference to the i presenter it's depending on this abstraction it's not depending on the presenter directly so we can mock the other components easily because it's depending on the interface sorry and if you have one screen so and maybe what happens is if you have, if you have one screen at the login screen or or the recycler view right if you have one screen uh there will be one view there will be one present usually there is a one on one mapping and this is not actually this is not a two way binding because model does not have a reference to the presenter presenter knows about the model but not the other way around so now presenter tells me gives the data model gets the data and since in that local thing presenter has called it it passes along the data to the presenter this is the mvp pattern and this is if you follow the mind docs blog this is from the this is um, this is this i took from their blog this is the same thing again this is like the low level format this is a little bigger back this is bigger this is actually the more expanded version of that so this dotted line is view this concrete thing is actually a concrete class so in mvp what is view view is activity or fragment or the ui elements is view the presenter is a normal java class and you can see the view it actually depends on the presenter interface and the presenter depends on the view interface and presenter again it this is actually mvp interactor but again this thing you can think of it as interface so this interface is separate its implementation is separate and again via interface it communicates via api via interface it communicates via the, the preferences shared preferences via interface it communicates via the local and remote repository this is mvp uh, in the tail format any questions here i to let's code a little bit is there a, is there anyone who is still using eclipse for android development hope not so again like so this is more like a theoretical session right so no, not a theoretical this is more like a practical session so uh, if you feel uh, that you you know if you feel it's a little bit boring so actually it is boring because we are doing we are doing practical thing it will take some time set up the architecture so now before i begin uh, so today now we have covered the basic and other things now the motto is to uh, implement this uh, to create the skeleton and create as much ui as possible then we'll take it up from the next meetup starting from a new android studio project I'm just keeping everything by default. It puts at ninety point one percent. Can include Kotlin support also. Not Kotlin. MD activity. Yeah. 
ਦੇਖਣ ਦੇਖ ਲਿਆ ਇਹ the benefit of mvp is all these loads um you know it if the friends are so loosely coupled model can actually can grow can go independent of center center can go independent of you right so in this particular example what we are going to do is that means this what will be building not exactly this because this is that we got from the designer and uh, we don't have this much quantity time to develop all these things and there was a miscommunication the designer thought actually we'll be will be displaying a list of dishes from a restaurant and we're actually displaying a list of restaurant the miscommunication but yeah this this will be like a kind of similar uh, a list of restaurant will display once you launch the app will display a list of restaurants once you click on one restaurant shows a uh, dishes right now but yeah this is just a mock up so when you click when you click on the restaurant it will show you the detail page of the restaurant which says um says this thing like the, the restaurant title the tagline some other things like the address any picture that captures the essence of the restaurant so we have the rest api is working uh, that is in node js but yeah will not use the rest api this is So this is one question from me let's say the uh, you all like we are, we are divided into three groups so there is a group which in which me and rohan we are working there is another group like this part of the back which is working on the presenter the other part is working on the view so now you guys are actually a lot of you guys and you are you guys are hard working so you're working on this and we guys are floppy so we are not working the rest api is not complete if the rest api is not complete should you not develop the view could you not develop the present there's too much of dependency right so presenter and view should be able to develop independent of the model irrespective of whether the model is ready or not someone who's working on the views so now if they are dependent on everything so then the people who are who are developing the view who are working on the view they are blocked because the ui is not complete the, the rest api is not complete this should not be the case right so when if your components are loosely coupled what happens is you know like uh, if i have created the view i have written unit test for the view then i know that i can say with some confidence my view is perfectly working once your model is set up you can just wire it up and you can do integration testing so i should not be waiting for the model and other things to to say that okay my view is working perfect right so that is easily achievable in mvp because uh, again like there are separate interfaces right so there are since there are different interfaces a uh, view is this is the view this is activity view is depending on the presenter interface presenter is depending on the model interface right so since there are different interfaces is depending on the interface and interface is just a contract right so interface has methods like you know give me the data fetch data get data update data these things are there but actual implementation is not there and presenter does not need the actual implementation presenter all presenter needs to know is there is a method called update data in the module there is a method called get data in the module that's it this is the power of loose coupling so now i need created this project newly it may take some time because i'm doing live coding so everything goes wrong so uh, please excuse me it might because this is the fun thing about live coding right this is the default structure with this so let's uh, i'm creating a new structure here if you if the font is too small no. font is too small just let me know or is it okay
which is here i want to create package called data this will be my this is actually the model package all the things in that model will be wrapped inside this and then i want to create this three inch you can call it three inch you can call it activities you can call it ui because this package will contain all the schemes and uh, this is a common practice utils so many with empty with kotlin actually utils you can bring to utils entirely but here yeah, we are not using there there is app for application class so inside themes i just move activity inside scene the scenes will have packages for uh, this will this is for the home activity and then there is one details activity and also in there are views and presenter so if see this i have another thing that I as a part of this uh, full scholarship challenge course we created this app here we here also we used mvp we created a quiz app basically there are quizzes you attempt the quizzes there are 10 questions you attempted then it will show you 6 out of 10 is correct you got 60% marks and then you can review then you can attempt the next quiz this this is the app these are again the basics and yeah this is what i wanted to show yeah so here you can see this is the model layer this is the m this is the m of mvp and the view and presenter so since view is also view is an interface presenter is an interface so we actually we combine them together inside this thing called contract so for example if i want to create a sign in view if i want to create a home view i'll create a an interface called contract i'll keep view and presenter inside it so just to you know keep it together we can create separate classes if we want but yeah it uh, it's actually it's better to keep these things together so that actually the naming convention is better so there will be multiple views and presenters but one model you can have separate models also if you are following clean architecture and other things you want to bring in you can have separate models which will eventually communicate with one data source you can have that also but yeah it, this is what we will be following so here creating a base interface generics to just to know the ticket this two is linked with this and the uh, usually the things that will have with uh, view is low loading and high loading so you will actually see when i say the view is dumb you will actually see why the view is dumb and how the view is dumb Just to just to link view with the presenter. This view, the this presenter. now all the views should extend from base views and all the presenters from this base presenter 
let me create for home will not create a home activity will will create this will create this third screen in this and then uh, in the next meetup we'll take up the other things if you have some time we'll do it today let's see it to so start from the second screen Just as a button, you click on this button and it will navigate to the detail view. But remind you, you have not added the detail. This is the screen that will be built. Has anybody used um, coordinator layout? Coordinator layout, constant layout, constant layout. You must have used it. With coordinator layout, you can use different things. Like with uh, you know, you can you can have nested scrolling. You can get some sort of animation. Let me show. I actually I created this app. Let me show that app. So just in case the live coding goes wrong, I still have the code. So so while that loads, yeah. So now the home will create it later for details. This is the structure we have in our app right now. The app data screens and utils. If you need something else, we'll add it here. So data, as I mentioned, this is the data package. This is the model layer. So this is actually one very a uh, big confusion if you see throughout the web if you see in the web if you, if you look at different blogs if you look at different posts youtube videos people confuse m in mvp and mvvm with model m is not model it's actually the layer the interface layer and there are people who actually who prefer to keep m as just the model only and presenter makes the api calls and presenter is actually again now the presenter is gaining more responsibility right and you cannot separate it e even there if you Actually, if you delegate, if you create interfaces and delegate responsibilities, so you will you will come up with your own pattern, which will not be MVP. It will still be good, but it will not be MVP. So, M is actually not the Java POJOs or the uh, or the struct in Swift or the yeah, it's called POJO in Java, right? It's not just the holder class. That is the data holder. That is that is also called model classes, but that is not the model. That is not the MVP model. MVP model is this. I'm going to create one interface here. Now I'm creating. The model interface called the data manager. So, what are the responsibilities of data manager? Getting the data. We'll have things like you know fetch, fetch trend, sales. That will be the restaurant ID. Only if it's plug, it's actually restaurant ID. And uh, since we are using code only Java only, we are not using any uh, reactive programming or anything. So how does how will it pass the data? The, because this call will be asynchronous, right? So how will it pass the data? So let me create a callback interface. This is the callback interface. So, whenever somebody calls fetch restaurant details from the data manager class, they also need to they need to pass the restaurant ID 
for which the, we need we are setting the details plus we need to pass i don't have the module right this i'll create let me create module classes first I also created the swagger for this. But yeah, anyway, this is the this is my JSON. This is the JSON I'm expecting. How do I create a model for this? From JSON to Pojo. Anyone? Online? I don't have internet here. There is an actual better way. Uh, you can go to plugins. Those repositories, and you can search for this plugin called uh, JSON to Pojo. And what it gives you is it gives you an awesome create new generate Pojo from CD with that right there. And first will be JSON. So notice that it has a comment, so it says uh, it has a nested JSON which is comment, which is actually JSON array. All it asks for is root is the root class name. Which is, I think, which is true for online compilers also, online converters also. So if I just do this, field name start with M. Oh, okay. this is what I said last. And yeah, we're good to go. It adds, it adds some useless notation. Uh, yeah, before that, again, I need to add some dependencies. So I will use Picasso for image loading, JSON, sign, recycle, review. Has anybody used Picasso? Picasso? Slides? Tesco? Tesco 1? Nobody used Tesco? Even I have not used it, I just know about it. Just now I added recycler dependency plus uh, support design plus JSON for you know JSON conversion and uh, yeah only these four. Thing indexing okay. So now let me clear up the model. Test current. Start again. That is a handy utility to convert, you know, JSON from. Body commented by name. It all it introduced the JSON annotations also. Serialized names and other things. And the field names are proper. Because it's not added the serialized annotations here. Probably it will take it from there, but then taking the project classes from here. The serialized annotation. Yeah, but yeah, they're not same. It has underscores and hyphens. Now my 
Puedo usar Confuse. Whenever somebody wants to fetch the restaurant details, they need to pass the restaurant ID plus a callback. Of type what? This is the standard Java way of doing it. And say when I say, you know, fetch all restaurants, these are the two methods of the data. Fetch all restaurants. Pass anything. Then this will be a list of. You say get all restaurants. It will be a list of restaurants. So now my data manager interface is ready. So <clears throat> the manager is so. Talk about now in the details. Let me create, I created the model interface. This is the model interface data manager. For the details activity, let me create view and presenter. You don't have to actually, you know, do this exactly, do details contact and inside this you create interfaces. You can create two separate interfaces, details view and details presenter. This is why we created the base view and base presenter. So now it gives me an ease, you know. So this is actually the naming convention. It's actually I like this naming convention. So whenever whenever I refer to details contact dot view interface, I know I'm talking about the details view. I'm talking about the details presenter. There is a home. I'll make it home contact dot view home contact dot presenter. So this details contact the contact interface is actually doing nothing except keeping these view and presenter interface together. Other than that, it's not doing anything. There is any other constant we can add it here, but other than that, there is no use of details contact. So here in the details contact, what should be the view method? What should be the responsibilities of the view in this? In this. So we already have a few responsibilities defined in the base view, which is show loading, hide loading. And get presenter. Get presenter is, uh, will not be used actually. Yeah, but other than that, what will be the responsibilities of the view here? Load image, load uh, other details, load rating, right? So this will not exactly make this. There will be no floating action button. I have this here. These are the responsibilities of view. Load the restaurant picture, the name, the ratings, and other things. You no. Know, so there is actually one obvious question that comes here. You know, why not pass the restaurant model to the view? Why not pass the restaurant model and view the model? The view can actually, you know, get the whatever the pick, the restaurant name, other other things. It will be easy. Load restaurant details, pass the model. It's actually much easier. But in that case, what happens is actually I am exposing the model to the view. The problem is the model contains. 20 fields and view needs five fields. We should not be sending the model. Another way is to create a um, simpler model, which will actually, you know, will create this model from the bigger model and then pass that model. That is another way. So now, this is actually I like this way. So individually, things each things are here. And what else I can do? The details activity since this is a view. So we have the this is the view interface, right? This is the view interface. Where is the implementation for this method? That the activity will implement the here are all the methods. So if you see this activity, so this is actually still empty. 
but if you see this activity so it activity knows here i'll write something like this picasso dot load uh, this url image into this image you will write that so this activity if you see this activity knows how to load a url into image view but this activity does not know when to do this when part will be decided by presenter and view will actually you know view is a obedient servant which follows presenter's instruction the details activity and uh, i need to do one more thing in the home activity and the other in Yes. It's actually will be based on whichever restaurant that I pick. But yeah, for testing, run extra parameter and start activity. Now this will start this activity. Home activities job is done for today. This. Uh, Keep this right. Let me just copy this. I'll explain this here. I'm using coordinate layout here. Need some colors. Variables. So I have the assets ready here. How do I create the drawable folder? XHDP, IMDP, it's not there. We can also manually create this. Try to keep it uh, in sync with the theme. The default color scheme from under. Here 
actually it's quite difficult to understand you know this i created a theme which has no action bar because i'll be using i'll be using toolbar and i added some colors which is in line with uh, things with the mocks that we got uh, not exactly but yeah i kept it as close as possible and uh, what else did i add i added other these things are uh, the resources the activity details shows no errors except this I have a sample image just to show it here. This is the UI that it looks. Looks bad, but yeah, we got the basic things covered up here. We are showing the displaying the restaurant name twice. There's a rating bar here. There is the edit icon. So this is actually we are keeping this activity as you know, there'll be there'll be one screen for viewing the restaurant details, for editing the restaurant details, for adding a new restaurant. We'll use the same screen. So that's why these are actually edit text. Uh, we'll keep it non-editable. Then if you want to edit it, click on the edit icon. It'll all become editable. then you can update and red icon will become save icon then you can save you can make changes you can save it in the this the screen is done so for the screen now our details activity this is still empty so uh, let me just Initialize you. And if you remember, view also has a reference to what? Sales contract dot. So now details contract dot presented. This is actually this is a interface. So now view has a view has a reference to details contract dot presenter interface. Means view actually updates, owns and updates the presenter. So actually, this will become much better if we are using if we are using third-party libraries like uh, dependency injection. So we don't have to do the manual things here. Presenter is equal to new presenter. I have to do here, do it here because you know whenever you see a new keyword, as actually that's that's a sign that you know something is going wrong with your application because new is something if you if you're writing you know x is equal to new x. that means it's actually it's depending on the abstraction it cannot be mocked it's actually it's all inside so we should not do this but yeah the, uh, for now we're doing like this have a presenter e so in the themes package in the details package so we have a contract we have activity which is a view we don't have a presenter yet here the details package. actually Next, it needs a reference to the view. Also, presenter is done. That is the skeleton part. Right. Enter. We can pass this. Here we can pass this because it's implementing the view. Because it's expecting a view, it's expecting a type of details contact dot view. And since this activity implements details contact dot view, which becomes the super class, so we can actually pass it pass this here. Initialize UI. Then.
here if you see i have implemented those methods so load restaurant pick also dot load if it needs a context load what the url this is the placeholder image we can actually replace it later but into what into the img restaurant which is a which is this image view load the image in this image view this image view so if you see this activity has overridden those methods load restaurant pick load restaurant name rating tagline and other things lot of things are here and now in the presenter need to make the call so if you remember the data part this is the only thing in the data there is no actual implementation of these methods so there is no data manager ready but i am creating a presenter which actually which is dependent on the uh, which needs uh, the data uh, the the models reference right so now here right now it's um, here i can write stuff like this details presenter data manager dot fetch restaurant details i can pass plus i can there is a data manager callback which gives me either a result or an error and based on this error i can actually pass the error to the view if you remember view view has these methods load uh, all the details plus there is an on error method so if there is an error method error happens you need to tell the view so view, view can show an alert dialog or a toast or something that some error has happened please try again later from presenter is done with this so now my model is not ready but my presenter is ready and my view is ready so i am not dependent on the on the model view when i was creating the view i was not dependent on the presenter i when i created the presenter i was not dependent on the view because in the presenter if you see see that it, it it has a reference to data context uh, details context dot view so all it needs is you know whenever it wants to it receive the details of the restaurant it needs to call view dot show loading presenter need not know how the view shows loading you can show a toast you can show a loader you can show some other things all presenter cares about is i have a reference details contact dot view and which has a show loading method from the base view from here it has a show loading high loading method right so now presenter doesn't care that whether the you know whether the view interface is pointing to the activity or some mock class or something else yeah please presenter does not care about that uh, all presenter cares about is is the view interface and vice versa what what view cares about is is the presenter interface here so whenever this happens uh, since i'm passing a extra parameter that is needed like get restaurant details which uh, restaurant details So now, whenever this launches in the onCreate, it will initialize the UI. It will check if this contains the key, and then it will create the presenter, and it will call presenter dot start. Put down here, 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 all the things. Are. Only one thing is pending, and that is creating the model. Model, what I can do is. data manager i can create so this one thing more to notice here is this is data manager is public it needs to be public because other components are referencing it 
but the implementation of the data manager the uh, app data manager it need not it need not be public is a package private and it implements the So here, let me just add a to do here. You can What should I do? I've created the view. I've created the presenter. How should I test it? Should I wait for him to come back and do this? Because I don't know how to make an API call. So it should not be this hard. Now, since we are depending on the data manager interface, I can actually create a mock of this. So let me create another provider for here. Call it data manager provider. this is supposed to give me an instance of data manager right so here i can have let's say private setting now right that will implementation it will be return new app data handler app data manager because in app data manager here we'll be making the actual API calls, right? Provide real implementation. You can also say private static at Morgan. Return for mock, I can create a new data handler. From here, I can write return. And here in the BTS presenter, where we need a data manager, data manager is now here the data manager class, data manager interface. I am getting a reference from here, data manager dot provide. So this is providing me. I this guy does not know whether the implementation provided is actually mocked one or real one, right? Because that is hidden here. I call get mock implementation here. If I call get real implementation here. It will be uh, it will be real implementation, but since real implementation is still pending, I just created get mo get me a mock implementation. So from here, let me create some uh, this data or the dummy data. Data. Here, what I'm doing is creating a dummy data here. So, if you see, this is the single restaurant data, this is just a JSON. And uh, when I call this method, this is a test utility method, not used anywhere. Get mocked restaurant, get mocked restaurant list. When I call this, it will pass this JSON to give me the list. This is actually doing the JSON parsing. So this is like the actual API call, right? And this is mocked restaurant, give me mock restaurant. It will actually take the single restaurant, which is this JSON. It's parsing it and it's giving it to me. So now in the data manager provider, in the, this is my mock implementation. Here I can write callback dot on response test utils dot get mocked data. That's all I need to do. And there'll be no change in the presenter or view. 
So if I switch this from this, if I switch this, you can you can do this based on some if condition or based on some other like if build config is debug or not. So if I do this and this, no change in the presenter or view. Or if I switch from here to here, from mock implementation to real implementation, there is no change anywhere. So now this is ready. This is something. This is something I created earlier, but yeah, this will be very similar. Click on this some image and it's loading it from here, and all this data is coming from it's coming from uh, the the dummy data, the dummy JSON. So if I replace that from the actual API, there will be no change in the view and presenter. And this is uh, this is what I was talking about. If you use coordinator layout with uh, with tab bar layout and collapsing toolbar, this is the effect you can get. The effect you get quite nice. This was from the previous implementation. Let's see if this one works. The high probability it won't. Let's see. So I copied a lot of code from my old implementation to here, right? So if you have any doubt, like. What what I copied? What is implementation? Because you know, writing all these things together, even this took a lot of time to implement one page. So if you have any questions, and here, let's say here, you know, how how testing becomes easy here. The view. So if if I have created the view, right? The view means meaning the the loader, the image, and the, all the things I created here. The job of presenter is to give me the string. The presenter tells this is the uh, this is the restaurant name. You load it. We load it in the toolbar. We load it in the text, right? And the font and the other things is user responsibility. Now, what should happen if there is no internet? How do I test it if there is no internet? How do I test it if the API is is breaking? How do I test it if some you know there is some errors? How uh, how do I actually test it? Should I actually wait for somebody to create the API then generate those test cases? This is not. This should not be dependent on that, right? Yeah, here two things. Does anybody know about the parent activity thing? So what it does is you don't have to don't have to write, you know, close this and open the other activity. If you just write parent activity name, which will be my activity for this, and we also need a style which is using the theme for theme. So if you just do this, the back implementation is done for you. You don't have to do anything. So uh, I was talking about view. So view should be able to handle no network cases. We should be able to handle if there is access data, how to you know if there is if there is a loading button, what should be the behavior, uh, and other things like if something if if I tap something, what should happen? So view should it should be I should be able to test view in isolation. My unit test cases should be fast. Should not be dependent on network and other things and you know file system which is taking time. If it's dependent on that, and then there is something definitely something wrong. What is working? But it's not loading. Can anybody tell me what could be the reason? It's not loading the image. Internet permission. So now the flow is. The entry point is view because activities on create will be called. Then it will initialize the UI to create the presenter. It will tell the presenter to start it. 
the winter starts it and uh, all this magic happens no oh yes yes so now this this is the actually nice animation i get with coordinator layout and this back button is implemented for me so it's this is the actually mvp the root of the box now if uh, now did you get like you know how to test the view in isolation you got it right so how how do i how do i mock it here so let's see how the view acts in isolation in if there is some failure all i need to do is go to the mock implementation i'm calling on response here because i'm assuming this will what should i'm testing what should happen in successful if i get a successful response but what should happen in error let me see if there's a toast here so right now it's toast but you know whatever you write like um the android dialog or alert dialog or whatever you want to write here we we just want to see if if i receive an error will that be invoked or not that could be an api error that could be any failure i need to in i need to see that on error method is invoked calling api get save me is this Oh, this is the default image, yeah. The default image. Yeah, this one. Change it. So, and it has the default thing is you can see Lombardi's pizza, and here it says Lombardi's. So that that means this is not loaded. The mocked one is Sundance Cafe. Now it will it will show the default values and it will say the error message. So now I can test the view without actually you know worrying about presenter or network or model or whether data is coming from where. I can test the view in isolation. The same thing I can do with presenter. Same thing I can do with model. So now this was the uh, MVP. We implemented this. Next, we'll implement this. But yeah, we're out of time. Um, any questions? Was this live coding boring, or if it's boring, or just let me know so next time we can actually improvise it. I copied a lot of code, but still, it took a lot of time. we can handle click events also so if you have used mockito or which is used for mocking right mockito library so how do we test in mockito like how do we test things if you're testing view in isolation and there is a there is a reference to presenter interface right so when i do this internally what it's doing we don't want to know but all we care about is if i do this it makes some changes in the view and it calls this method what is the data in this method we can test what this that method does is none of our job it what that is presenter's job but we want what view cares about is when something when i click this button it should call presenter dot reload or you know something get restaurant details it should call that method this uh, test that much that is view's responsibility and testing view in isolation uh, you, you know like if you're testing view in isolation so you you know view view is working fine presenter is working fine model is working fine you combine everything you do integration testing everything is working fine you're good to go Uh, one example that i uh, that i gave in last meetup and uh, that i uh, that i love that example is actually you know you creating a creating a this uh, you're creating an android app which actually turns your bedroom light on and off then actually iot mechanism everything is fine here you're using some sdk which gives you an uh, you know a convenience method to you know switch on and switch off the light so now you're developing the app you're developing the app and you're using the sdk and what happens is actually you switch is switch you're testing that right now you switch it on and the the actually the bulb is not get not getting switched on 
so you don't know what's the issue you're debugging your whole app you you you're breaking your your head and everything and eventually you find out that the bulb is fused actually so in that case what you can do is you know the view is working fine presenter is working fine model is working fine so you can be sure that i am calling this method of sdk so this app is fine there is something wrong in this end and you know if let's say you are the one who's developing the who has developed the that uh, that bulb sdk i'm the one who developed the app you know i can say no this is not my fault this is your sdk's fault right i can i can blame it on you so uh yeah that was the app Do we? Oh no no! See, in this case, so did everybody get the question? So what he's saying is, we can can why can't we use a presenter in uh, a fragment instead of presenter? you use a fragment it's actually you know it works very well with activities you can have callback methods you can pass arguments it's life cycle aware and all these things all right so did everybody everybody get the question so here what we are doing is actually you know we are depending on actually the fragment class right now if you see you see the presenter right you see these presenter you see these presenter these are actually these are just interfaces but yeah assuming like there is a presenter which implements there is a class which implements this interface so uh, what happens is in this presenter there are no android dependence it's pure java in this also if you see there is no android dependencies data manager provider is java class this is java pojo data manager is an interface right there is no android dependency so it is actually very easy to test this and solve if you become dependent on android components so if you want to go for you know life cycle aware components for live data and other android also here yes you have to do some extra work to handle that but if you write fragment right so now you are depending on fragment so you cannot mock that you cannot replace that actually now tightly coupled which is basically a violation of dependency in version 2 of solid you should not do that Yeah, yeah, that's true. But we are depending on fragment, which is an Android component. So now I won't be able to test this part in isolation. I need some Android dependency, right? So we can mock those dependencies, but in that case, you know, uh, the whole point of using fragment is gone. It's it's actually it's similar to a Java class. So why not use a Java class? Why are you using fragment? If you mock that thing, if you mock the fragment, right? So it won't be receiving any callback method, the lifecycle call. in the fragment it's not attached to the activity this activity is going so yeah so in that case what we need to do is we need to pass the life cycle callback so we have if you see in the view there is one on destroy method that we are getting from the base presenter we can have on pass another thing so that we can that we can do here So, uh, yeah, this is actually this is the basic MVP pattern. But yes, there are like you know you can use some lifecycle aware components, live data and other things. So and if you use like you know the the view model of the Android architecture component, lifecycle aware. So you don't need to you don't need a presenter here. So what that does is, and yeah, one basic difference between MVP, MS. uh 
the view in mvp is very lightweight it's dumb it doesn't know anything any view if you see details activity if you see it knows how to load a restaurant pic in the image view it knows that it knows how to load the restaurant name in the toolbar and in the text view but it does not know when so who knows when the presenter knows when it tells it to you know load restaurant pic load restaurant it knows all these things so view is dumb view is view does not know view is not aware of any of the stuff but in mvvm what happens is view gets some responsibility you you cannot test view in isolation but you don't need to in mvvm because it's actually tightly coupled uh, not tightly coupled there's a two way binding there that is mvp and mvvm different this is actually this is just the basic uh, but yeah right now if you want to this is just just, just for you know uh, we are covering it this is a completely basic we are covering this but yeah we also recommend using android architecture component so that is basically mvvm with repository python and other if you use that all your uh, whatever your concern is right so that is actually all taken care of in the android with i have not seen it but yeah in jetpack also there are some other things jetpack any other question we are showing loading here so if you see detail activity for initialize you everything is done we are creating the presenter then we are calling presenter dot start and we are actually passing the slug right so tomorrow when we implement the recycle review with a list of restaurant click on it and you pass something so in that case we don't need to change anything here because we are passing the key and the value the key value we need to go to presenter and here that value is actually taken and that value is being passed here in the data manager's method so tomorrow when we implement the actual thing the actual recycle review and uh, other api and other things no need to change in this there will be no change because it's taking a parameter it's passing this parameter as if it's an actual parameter so the presenter does not know it's an actual parameter or it's just a mock parameter right that was the, uh, that was mvp if you still have any questions you can ask me after the session so we'll take a 10 minutes break here uh, after this we'll be covering mvvm on ios will be there's the coffee machine come on rest of you are free to leave <laughs> you can ask Yeah, it's totally okay to write helper classes, as long as your code is loosely coupled. Things and uh, yeah, sorry, Rohan, I'm saying this, but yeah, uh, um, you know, have you created any app? You created an app, so your end user does he care that you used MVP or MVP? No, right? It doesn't matter. Eventually, what matters is if your app is working good. So all these components, uh, what this does is, you know, uh, it will help you in case of any change. So in the in this particular case, right? So if if I'm using like a Node.js database, if I switch to some AWS tomorrow, the URL, base URL, everything will change. All I need to do is change in the model. Everything else is taken care of. This change will not propagate to presenter and view, right? So uh, in the model, what I can do is I can write a wrapper class. This model is wrapped inside and which is so you know like uh, this restaurant model right now uh, there is actually no, there is no wrapper class so you can see there is no swagger yeah this is actually i created this json i use this json to create the poja class so this is exact one to one mapping with key value pair right so i can have my own classes which can have the four or five fields i want just the name name url rating other things perfect things are there that's all i care about and i can write a wrapper class we should actually convert this into this right so this wrapper class and all is all everything is allowed so this is actually uh, this a uh, small model class is also good because i can send it directly to view without exposing my business logic to the view it's all wrapped inside the model writing wrapper class is completely fine um you can use other factory patterns or uh, not factory patterns other other design patterns also inside each component individually 
you also you can use in presenter you can use uh, for model you can use single singleton pattern i use that a lot actually this uh, singleton should not be used uh, but if you use it properly it's okay to use singleton so here in the i usually keep this this app data manager this class i keep it singleton i am using single pattern and inside this i can have multiple wrappers so um once like in i was using firebase as my backend so the firebase the the real time database it has a lot of things i don't care about those things i, I need only five things the view needs five things so i created a wrapper so it made it very easy for me to switch from firebase to node.js because everything all the change was inside the module that was uh, that is actually one you can write wrapper classes wrapper classes in fact helper classes anything that uses your pen right Okay, guys. So, ten minute break, and there will be snacks after uh, two o'clock. Okay, so we'll start with the MVVM session now. iOS. Basically, as you witnessed, that Kaushal already a lot of the end users actually care about architecture. If I am using any app, I don't care whether it in MVP or Viper or anything. Do I actually care about? When I'm using an app, yeah, it should be working, right? That's the only. If you are putting an app in it, not working for you, not of any use. And yeah. what we'll be covering in this session is we'll have a quick uh, recap of. few of the thing things uh, that we want and we'll see what mvm is advantages and what is or what are for ios web and uh, how do we actually install for jan then we'll uh, live coding Find the app. What are the different ways in which you can implement? Yeah. For iOS, need to actually a few things. MVVM. So the first thing is closure. So what is for closure? Actually, how many of So yeah, so you can. I mean, most of you are from Android, so I'll relate it to Android. Closures are nothing. Cameras in Android. Is that will. Then uh, we have something called as optional. Optional is nothing but. Let's say, you want to create a string which can. Hold no value, or it can have a value, right? Just like you have null in Java, we have nil in. Containing those kind of values or variables, variables, you want to have a string variable which can have an option. Say that wrap string name. Data type will be string. Question mark. Question mark denotes that the variable is of of type. And then we have something called as protocol. Basically, again, lining up with the Java world, so it but the interface, but it has some other stuff. 
that we can do. And then we have something called as extension. We don't have, I guess we don't have anything of this sort in Java. What extensions are like, if you have a class and you have three methods in it, methods A, B, and C. If you now need to write a method, probably you will do is open up the class, write it over there. Instead of that, you can write in another file. Say just extension, class name, that it is extension and the class name that you want to extend and write a method in and write the method over there. Instead of writing the method in the class file, you can write file, but it will be of that class itself. MVVM. Basically, why do we care about architecture? Let's say I am I have two people in my team. And one guy does most of the work. So let's say he implements everything in one view control. Is there a problem? There is a new requirement. Comes in. Right. Yeah. First thing is if I am working, let's say I am that develop develop that happy code. If I am available, there is no problem. If I am not available and else he's he won't have the slightest idea of what to do he might but those variables or those values or those might be getting you some else and that might take your code some other part. that's why some architecture now again we had a guy last time very hyper like viper He he needed an answer that why we are using this architecture, why are using that architecture, why should we use that architecture? It's completely up to you. No one says that you should go with this architecture. Even when you say that we are following MVP to MVVM, there are multiple ways. That. And it all depends on the developers what skills they have. In what on MVVM. So MVVM stands for more. So in iOS development, we see is we have a view control that actually does the part of view have in MVVM. That is combined over here. That actually is the view in our iOS app. MVVM, what the view controller is, is actually then we have the view model. View, view model will actually have the present does the business have any. What view model will actually contain is the exact values that a view requires. Like in you saw it has gave the have that and model then what are the advantages of MVVM first is that view controllers are more meant actually move the view control separate class view model is actually Better testable. If you have a view controller, every logic is in. If you want to test your logic, you cannot do that. It is almost very hard actually to mock the view control. You cannot do that. But it generates and generates more. It makes making the changes. Easy. Have your view at one place so from now I might say view control 
present the same. If you want to make changes to the, actually handle your changes in logic and business, some other that you will be doing in your. There might be cases like uh, you have a text field, let's say rating, rating of restaurant. In case the rating is less than two, need to display it in red color. Or you might need to add some other very bad. Then for trying to show average five. What you do is actually that logic the view model. <laughs> and code reusability check. Let's say you have restaurant. You are have if you have like three separate view controller displaying the same thing but differently might have whole UI separated out like a view controller one, the image comes second. What you will do is you will need to write your whole logic in every view. Instead of that, move the view model. Just ask the view details from the This case uh, now everyone talks about the advantage that anything nobody talks about the advantage first get a disadvantage let's say you have a view or a screen you just have two items in have the uh, restaurant name, have tagline. You are using or implementing any system, you need to write extra code. This testable, alright, but you need to write extra code. A simple view is also, it could be an over, or, but it is awesome when you. Then it could also create
when you are actually writing the code let's say for displaying an image you can write it in a simple swift you can have a simple swift an image but the image will be coming from a so that is easy but did you ever consider that you should have image caching as maybe not maybe you will write that code maybe use any library same thing as we have everything figured out and we have implemented like that yeah we'll see if solo pod we'll we'll start with a new project new export project i'm that it is a single view that i'll call it mail file so if you want to include the unit test i mean whether on you will be implementing the ui or the test as well as that will be covering in a different session that we have that will be covered in that so that session will cover how to do write the unit have this new project so now let's say we want to load an image in an image you can write the code and we will be using a library so if you want to search for any library have okay. you can search for any libraries over here if you know the name of the library let's say i want to display an image the type web image you can see there are multiple what we'll be using for the project is sdk web so for installing any pod initially what you need to do need to go in the folder where you have actually uh, to the terminal then just say pod this will actually create a pod file over now you can add the library name like we'll have the document and they'll also provide you they also provide how to install library have this proper library name
it will download all if you want to delete a library just edit the file then actually do library Yeah, so pod is a command line tool, so you need to install that you can find it on. But initializing the pod, you need to actually. After that, right now we do not have anything over here. Just contain the project. You need to after installing the pod actually for reopening the project. You need just stop this. So now you can see have a pods over here. Have the pod. So now, first, what we'll do is create the UI. In the UI, what we'll have is displaying an image, then the restaurant name, then the tagline, and then the rating of the restaurant. We actually need to do directly. Basically. Most of you have you know how to create the elements and put it. Want I can put it directly. Put so you got this right. Installing the pod and let's say you will just the demo. Of Have a image. I'll take an image object. I'm not adding any constraint. Just like we have references, Android have outlets in. Our And directly click on the control. Will create an outlet. Then we need to use the SD web image. A import. There's some issue with export. We show the such model, but if you run it, it up. This have yeah. We'll be assigning the image to the image view that we have. Outlet that we had created. So now we will just. Make the
you can do multiple things with the HD web image. You can have a loader showing up when the page is loaded. You can have a second image that you have multiple. That you can do. We'll close this one. Directly move. What I have actually created is basic project like that. Is not actually in any architecture. See that one. So it has the same pod installed. I show you. By basic, we have the. Have a image view tagline and rating. Right now we backend we are getting the rating. For so now, what I am using it is as the number of previews, the number of people. Just for the understanding of. To see my view controller It has the outlets for items that I have in view controller. Then I have a API service over and initializing a web service over like this is a details restaurant. From some other view controller, we'll be getting ID of the Right now, I have just added a constant step. Then my view also has a object of, and in view did load, getting the restaurant and setting the text and how many of you. You actually see my code I had made. That time I wasn't very aware of any architecture or the iOS or the Swift itself. If you see my main view controller, it is probably around 20 times. If there is anything that needs to be changed, I need to be there. If I am on leave, people call me up. Yeah, if you don't, if you actually want to enjoy your holiday, the architect. We'll run this code and see what it does. It only gets the you know details of the restaurant and updates that. What I'm doing is I calling an API service. I'm not actually calling. I'm written. restaurant, which has these details. The restaurant name is ABC. Tagline is very should. So how do we actually implement this? For implementing MVVM, as of now, we have four 
different types. Suppose if you are smart enough, have one. The first one is key value observer. So, what in this way? What like let's say there is an there is a class. Okay, it has a property. For observing that property and updating your code, watch for that property. Observe that. Property. But when you are observing from for that property, property name was passed as string. Just imagine that someone else has actually you know changed the parameter name. Class member. You will need to update it everywhere since we are using a string. Using it as that was an headache for PM with this format. Then we observe. Then we have something called as delegation. In delegation pattern, what we used to do is pass a delegate method. Basically, what is delegate or delegation? By the word, yeah. So, if I don't want to continue with this session, I can delegate like that. So. Called delegation. Right? You can have delegate method. A class will have a delegation, method, which it will delegate to another method. That method will act. Do it that way. So the problem, or you can say, the good thing about is this method, this delegation pattern. You can have control over what method you want. That was a good few issues, and we are not following. Or even if you are following, or let's say you are implementing it some other way, you can also have the delegation pattern in it. It's not actually that you need to just follow one of the way. You can follow. Then we have something called as reactive programming. How many of you? How many of you want to start with React? If you want to implement MVVM and you are not at all familiar with React to program, because it will be completely like Chinese to you, you won't understand the thing. Because for learning this, implementing using the React to program, first need to learn what React to program, what it does, then you can implement. MVVM. Then we have something called as property observer, which uses binding. What we are going to this will have a property observer attached to some view. So the view will constantly get updated since it is already watching. And this property is in the view model. When the model Or the view model changes that property, you will get automatic. So how do we do this kind of a binding? We will be creating just one class. We'll call say that it is boxing. We'll call it call it as box. We'll have it will be a generic class which will hold a type. Then we have a value for that again of type T. It says what have you seen any iOS guys? My what we are doing over here is whenever. I actually initiate a property. Dot value will actually hold the value of that property. And whenever I am updating that value, it will actually call this get set. So let's say you have so in 
in some class you have a variable foo okay whenever i am updating the foo value let's say it was was initially zero then at some place i updated it to one this date set method get called and what we are doing over here is just initializing the value Does it do? And what is what do you think is the use case? What is it? How is it actually beneficial? Great set. So the main, or let's say the main advantage of this is we don't care where the property is getting updated. Whenever the property gets updated, it will call this date set method. Whatever you have in the date set method will run. So now we want to have a listener. He said. Whenever a property is set, we want by the list. So for this, we are creating a listener, which will be a closure. This closure takes in one parameter, which is again the generate does not, and then we have a variable called. And what we'll do is actually call this listener. Here, whenever a property is changed, and the met or and the view that we need to update, we'll be passing a list. That list, whenever the property gets changed, might be very confusing. Once we start coding, and we have this method called bind. What it does is. It actually bind a listener that we have passed with this property. Property that will be. This is the complete section that is actually out. In MVVM, we are binding views with that the whenever the property changes, this is. Now we need to implement the MVVM model, MVVM architecture. Over so here, we had it plainly written that get the restaurant and just assign those values. To. First of all, what we'll do is we'll create a view. You know how to open. We want to have two files side by side. What you know? Option and just press off the file that you side by side. First of all. Oops. 
good faith. Good of you. In view model, what you need to do is actually have all the fields that will be sending to you. What we need from this is the restaurant name, guideline, and the rating. The image things we require. We'll first make four properties over here for the. Restaurant name, this will be of type. Restaurant. What will happen is whenever you say restaurant, retail view model. What we'll do is replace this with retail view model dot name dot restaurant name. We'll go to this view model, then get the value from the. Will be the restaurant. Now, since we'll be getting all details from the view model, we'll just replace the values what we were initially taking from the restaurant. Object.
if you run the code. Same thing is happening again. What we have done is we have moved the logic from a view control. Still does it. Is it good? Can be better. Right now we have. You does not have the reference to. Let's move. Have the ref. Now again, till many people, we fight over where the web service should. But and your networking call should. You can have the networking calls in your. Have the net. Or you can have them. Doesn't matter. Again, the preference. Is that you. So now, right now, we do not have any binding with any of the. We are just we just plainly moved all our bits from view controller to. What we'll do now is actually bind the variable with a view. I have one thing. Some other thing as well. So I've just commented it out. We'll see what it does. Let's say if we want to update the return. Now let's say I'm. What it is doing is just updating the return. Have the get the have to call. So for now, just for the sake of the demo, what I'm adding some random integer to the rating that we already have, and, and we are constantly calling it second. The value that we had initially, rating, which that will keep on changing. You see this, but still, the uh, what we have done is we are manually actually writing the code. Even this can be moved. The view mode. So imagine this: that we have three parts of the where we are. You want to update it. You need to manually write that code everywhere. You don't need to do that. Just can have the binding of that view. Once the property change, modify or actually print listener. Get the Saying that once it get finish, build the rating.
just for seeing whether it's working or not. Add and we'll log these changes in the. We'll just print it. What will happen now? Will the rating get updated? Get updated because we are not following. We are not actually, but we haven't actually binded our. What we'll do now is bind that, bind the view with the property that we have. Right now we are using. For that, we'll first need to create the box class that we had. we create we can create the box for the what we have done over here is we are initializing Rating with view. How this is going to? Work. When you say rating, box of int, right? and then you are passing a value. Your thing is creating a property of type integer. You are assigning the value. And in this bind function, we have written, we are actually calling this listener value there as well. Why are we actually calling this? Once the view binds, it will get the value that instance as well. not like only when you change this time. Have this over. Oh, 
from use this value view controller cannot have actually tail view mode have values now if you see Why is it coming? As we have initialized it. We haven't changed it. Now we'll actually bind the. Have this. actually binding the, the detail view model rating so whenever this rating gets updated we need to write the code what should be done We are just returning one value right, from the listener. That's why you can have value written over. The color zero is this term. It's the first argument that this change now. We have binded the, the view with the property. We have also initialized the is there or our code is see over here you can
get the restaurant rating headings random numbers click continue and don't need to worry about view control of happening don't need to pass in any just binded the view models rating property with a closure what that closure is see the list getting it whenever the detail view models rating will see this will get called so here in this is a very basic thing right what we'll be doing is we'll have a project that will be coming in the github that will have the initial structure the bad code and we'll also have a project which which will have this architecture in and check out those right on your the next session what we'll be doing is have table list table view and that will be getting someone else will be taking the seat that we will be populating the mvvm pattern right now this is just one way can make it this from i'll need to check it but yeah you from what i understand is we'll do is we'll have a button in the view right once you press that button the method will get called that method will be in the view model view model will say that update this once it get update will come to one where we had box that get fetch right get fetch you can i mentioned right you can 
combine the two or three method uh, four ways that has shown you can combine two of them three of them. only thing is brothers i should understand 